You are watching GNS TV Lansing, God's Filling Station. Hi, I'm so glad you tuned in. My name is Maria Fuentes, and we're here at GNS TV, the Good News Station. We're so glad that uh, we can be together, and we have a wonderful study for you today. We're going to continue on faith for the anointing, and this is Andrea. Andrea. Andrea Torres, hi. Yes, so faith for the anointing. We have two goals in this program. Number one, the first goal in this teaching is to arise faith in my heart concerning the healing ministry, the uh, healing anointing that God has placed in my life. And number two, we have another goal, and that is to arise faith in your heart. To rise faith in your, in your heart in the healing ministry that God has placed in my life on the healing anointing. So we have those two goals. Now, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 12.4 because there it talks about the gifts of the Spirit. And we're going to go to verse 4, Andrea. Amen. There are various gifts, it says, verse 4. There are various gifts but the same spirit. So various means uh, different kinds. Uh, there's a version that says diversity, mm -hmm. which means uh, many different kinds of gifts. So, and they all come through the Holy Spirit, it says. Mm -hmm. There are various gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of administrations or ministries, but the same Lord. And there are various operations, diversity kinds of operations, but it is the same God who operates all of them in all people. It's, I want to stop here and I want to clarify something. It's very important, uh, Andrea, like we were talking before the program, that this gifts is not something that we possess. It's something that flows through us. This is what the, uh, inter uh, the uh, Living Bible says. The Holy Spirit displays God's power through, through. It's important, that word, through, which means in and out, in and out, through us. The uh, Holy Spirit displays God's power through each of us as a means of helping the entire church. So in other words, these gifts are not something that, that we possess it's something that flows through us. It's something that the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit coming through us. Uh, we can't turn it on and on like we would turn a faucet and turn it on. It's not something that individual possesses or that it flows through him all the time. And he can uh, control it at will. Amen. At will. Amen. No, oh, okay, it's, it's done through the power of the Holy Spirit. So that's something very, very important that, uh, that we have to keep uh, in mind. Because I've heard some preachers say, well, that, uh, that uh, brother in the church uh, just possesses the gift of the wisdom, you know, the uh, gift of wisdom or the gift of knowledge. And he possesses that. Uh, it's a wrong concept. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because like I said before, it is something that we possess. It's something that the Holy Spirit flows through us. It's like a hose that the water flows through. It comes in one end and goes out the other. And the gifts of the Spirit are the same way. They flow through us for the benefit of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. But it's not something that uh, we can turn like a switch, turn it off and on at our will. Amen. Yes. Amen. So there are various or different or diversity kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are various operations, but it is the same God who operates all of them and all people. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to everyone for the common good. There you go. It's for the benefit of the church. To one is given the gift, the Spirit to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge. By the same Spirit, to another, faith. And that's not talking about the, uh, the measure of faith. 
that the, that the Lord gave us when we were born again. That is talking about supernatural Ooh, faith okay. for a particular situation. And I talked about that the last time that that we had the program mm -hmm. that the Lord graced me with that supernatural faith, that supernatural faith for that money that we needed for the car, for the payment of the car. Mm -hmm. And it says uh, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing. And we're going to talk about this gift today, the gift of healing by the same spirit to another, the working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits. We'll talk of that, about that in a later program. To another various kinds of tongues and to another the interpretation of tongues. But that one and very same spirit works all this. So see, it's a work of the spirit. It's not a natural thing. It's a work of the spirit. It's a supernatural work of the Spirit. But that one and very Spirit works all this. It's the Spirit of God who ministers these gifts through people, through the prophet, through the evangelist, through the pastor, uh, through the teacher, or through another individual. It's the Holy Spirit that ministers them. Dividing to each one, that's very important here, dividing to each one as he wills. So as the Spirit of God sees the opportunity or sees the need, better said, sees the need for that gift. Now, the Holy Spirit might uh, minister that gift through a certain vessel, through a prophet, a teacher, a pastor, you know, different, different vessels might minister it. But it's something that is done, like it says here, at His will. Now, we can believe for the gifts of the Spirit. You be believing. Mm -hmm. Believe for the gifts of the Spirit. And as we believe for them and as we study them, mm -hmm. then faith is there for them, you know, the, as we study those gifts. So we're going to talk today about the the, the, the gift of he gifts, it says gifts, gifts of healing, because there are many different ways that the Spirit of God has his minister that healing. Mm -hmm, There's various mm -hmm, ways. Mm -hmm. And then he, this is, it says that there's different kinds of administrations. So there, there are different ways that that healing can be ministered, Amen. different ways. Okay, so I wanted to talk, um, first of all, about a girl that was in the church when I was going to Light of Calvary some years ago. And there was this girl that always would ask prayer for her mother. She would say, you know, pray for my mother. My mother is sick. My mother is very sick. And uh, what I understood, she was uh, partially bedridden, partially. And so she couldn't really function, she said, and uh, she didn't even come to church. But one day, it was, I remember it was on a, on a weekday, a Wednesday night, I believe, when we had Bible studies. One day she brought her. And um, the Lord just uh, led me to go minister to her. And the way that I, I ministered to her was that I press my body against hers and I put my hands on her hand and my face on her face and I just got very very close to her I just put my body upon her and uh, when the service was over she went to the bathroom and I went to the bathroom and uh, so did Lily or my, my friend that uh, was in that church uh, we went to the bathroom and I saw her look in the mirror and I knew it in my spirit that she had come to herself. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean mm -hmm. by that? Mm -hmm. You know, she just came to herself. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I told my, my friend, her daughter, I said, listen, I said, uh, bring her to church. She needs to be under the word. She needs to be receiving the word of God. Mm -hmm. And as I thought about that later, I realized that that was a word of wisdom mm -hmm. given unto her. Because one of the things that happens, like, for example, in mass meetings, in meetings where, uh, for example, the meetings of Benny Hinn, uh, the meetings of Catherine Coleman, those meetings, people were healed supernaturally by the anointing. But what happens is, is when you're healed by the anointing or you are healed by, by the gifts of the Spirit, um, you can lose that healing. 
A lot of people don't realize that. Maybe you don't. But you can lose your healing. That's why Revelation says, hold fast to that which mm. thou hast. We have to hold fast to our healing. And so what happens is, is these people, they go back to their natural environment, and they're not under the Word of God or faith. And so they lose their healing. I didn't realize that when I said that to her, when I said she needs to be under the word. Make sure you get her to church. Make sure that she comes to church every week. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. But Brother Hagen speaks about that. And a lot mm -hmm. of the ministers of faith that, that uh, have healings, ministries of healings, uh, they talk about that, that, that you can lose your healing. Mm -hmm. And so... Because a lot of people think, well, if God healed me, then I'm always going to be healed. It's permanent. Well, at times, it, it isn't. You can lose it. And so what happened was that uh, she, she died um, several months ago, or a few months after that, she died. And as I wrote about this uh, experience, I asked the Lord, and I said, Lord, what happened? I know she was healed. I saw her come to herself, uh, and, and uh, this uh, friend's mother was uh, mentally oppressed, but she was healed by the anointing. Mm -hmm. And so she died afterwards, and I asked the Lord what had happened, because I said, Lord, I have no doubt, no doubt that she was healed. And he said, they didn't follow through. Mm -hmm. So how important it is to stay under the word and stay under the anointing. The best way that you can receive your healing uh, and that it will remain is through you yourself, your own faith, uh, based on the scriptures of God and receiving healing that way. Because then you receive it on your own faith and you are under the word and under the teachings of faith and you can hold fast to that healing. If not, it's possible that you could lose it. So that was that experience that I had that the Lord used me uh, in, in that healing. So where did I get uh, to do that? I mean, do you just come up with that uh, out of your mind? Well, the Bible says in 2 Kings uh, 4 that there was a woman in Elijah's time, the Shunammite woman. And this woman... Um, Elijah, Elijah used to pass by her house all the time, and he uh, stayed at her house. And this woman didn't have any children. She was barren. And Elijah, pray, Elijah prayed over her, and she got pregnant. She got pregnant, and she had that little boy. But the Bible says that uh, sometime later, when he was a little older, he went out to the field with his father, with the reapers, and he started complaining about an awful headache. He said, oh, my head, my head. And his father said, well, take him back to his mother. He told the reapers, take him back to his mother. And so they took him. She, he sat on her lap till noon, and he died. And when he died, she took him up to the prophet's room because she had made a room for the prophet in her house. So she took him to the prophet's room, laid him down, said to her husband, send me a servant and send me a donkey and, and settle him up because I'm going to go see the prophet. He said, well, what's going on? She said, don't worry, everything's all right. So she took off and the prophet saw her coming from far off. And he said to his servant, go, go and find out what the Shunammite woman is, what, what, what's going on. It, it, ask her if she's okay. Ask her if her husband's okay, if the child is okay. And when Gehazi, his his servant asked her, he said, she said, all is fine. So she was a woman of faith. All is fine. Mm -hmm. And then she went to Mount Carmel where the prophet was and she grabbed his feet and said, I'm not leaving without you because he had sent his servant to uh, lay his, uh, his rod over the uh, boy. But uh, when he came back, he says, the boy doesn't respond. So when Elijah got there, we're going to read verse 32. Uh, of this story. It says, when Elijah came to the house, he saw that the boy was dead, mm. lying on the bed. So he went in and shut the door on the two of them and prayed to the Lord. So he prayed because he wanted to find out what to do. He prayed to the Lord. He went up and laid on the child. Now, this is what I did with that woman. See, this is, I mean, I didn't know that this is what I was going to do, but I was prompted mm -hmm, by the Lord mm -hmm. to do this right at that time mm -hmm. when she was there. It says, he went up and laid on the child, put his face on his face and his eyes on his eyes, 
and his hands in his hands. And then he bent over the child, and the child's flesh mm. warmed. Then he got down, walked once back and forth in the house, and went up and bent over him. The boy sneezed seven times, and the boy opened his eyes. So this little boy was healed by the anointing that was upon Elijah's, uh, Elijah's life. And so was this woman. She was healed by the anointing. By the anointing. So we're not getting very far in this teaching, but that's okay because we're going to continue it. Amen. Okay. And then um, I wanted to talk a little bit about my mother's healing, which was also healed by the anointing. Uh, I was, this was in about 2008, and I was home, and I just had the prompting to go see her. So I went over to her house, opened the door, and she was laying on the couch. And I could tell in her face that she was in distress. And she, I said, Mother, I said, what's, what's going on? What's the matter? She said, oh, I feel so very bad. I feel so very sick. I, I just don't feel well. I said, well, mother, why don't you sit up? Sit up. Come and sit over here by the fireplace. And she sat down. She got up, sat down. I sat next to her or opposite her. And I said, uh, how is your uh, friend, uh, Sister Lopez? Oh, well, she's doing fine. She's working at the church, and she is uh, planting some flowers. Oh, well, how's your sister, Hermana Duarte? Oh, she's doing okay. And all of a sudden, she says, oh, I'm okay. I'm fine. Yeah, I feel great. She says, ya me siento bien in Spanish. Mm -hmm. I feel well. And I said, well, Mother, you just needed a little bit of fellowship. See, I wasn't even aware that she was being healed, that the anointing had healed her. It's like that woman with the issue of blood. Uh, when she went to reach out after mm -hmm. Jesus' uh, robe, that uh, she heard about Jesus. She heard that she, he was anointed and that the healing anointing flowed through him. And she went and touched him. And Jesus didn't even know that the healing anointing had, mm -hmm. or that oh, he knew, he perceived that the healing anointing had left him, but he didn't know who. And he wasn't even aware of that healing. So that was the way it was with mother, that, in that way. And then there's another healing that I want to talk about that was also a healing by the anointing. We had a, a couple that was a good friend of ours that used to go to our church. And uh, they had a little dog named Lily. And uh, Lily had a terrible problem. She paced back and forth and back, back and forth and back and forth, and she couldn't sleep. Mm -hmm. She was in distress and in an awful situation. And uh, one day they were going to go out of town. Well, I had been, I prayed for her. And, uh, and then the opportunity came up that they were going to go out of town. And the Lord said, just have her be by you. I said, okay. He didn't tell me why or anything. He just, I said, okay. So I said, uh, Manolito, Katia, I said, will you, is it okay if Lily stays here with us? Well, sure, she, you know, she can, she can stay. And I said, okay, and the Lord said, just have her be by your side and have her be with you. And so I would be in the bed and I would be praying and I would be studying the Bible and the things that I usually would do, go to the kitchen, she'd follow me everywhere I'd go, she'd lay down in the bed. Well, before long, Lily was laying down and sleeping which Katya said that she couldn't sleep, that she was very restless and couldn't sleep. So Lily was healed by the anointed. And I was a little curious. I said, Lord, what was the problem with Lily? What was the problem? And he said, it's a neurological disease, which is a disease of the uh, nervous system. Because I looked it up. When the Lord said that, I looked it up in the dictionary. And so it's a disease of the nervous system, and it's a disease of the brain where it affects all the nerves. Mm -hmm. And so she was very restless. She couldn't sleep. And so the Lord healed her brain. Mm -hmm. It was by the anointing. Mm -hmm. It was by that anointing that healed the dog. So is God interested in little dogs? <laughs> I mean, he's, oh, he's interested in everything that we're interested in. The Bible says in Deuteronomy that he is uh, concerned with every issue yes. of our lives. So, you know, some people might be kind of surprised. Oh, a dog can be healed. But sure, it, the anointing can heal a dog as well, a person as well as it can heal, heal a dog. 
So that was a uh, healing that the Lord used me. And the reason that I am uh, going through these healings and talking to you about these healings and Andrea and I are talking about it is because I want faith to arise in your heart concerning the healing ministry that God has placed in my life, the healing anointing that he has placed in my life. So that if you are in need of healing, then you can receive it. And the reason we're doing this is because it's done by faith. The Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. So in other words, you connect to that anointing, that healing anointing by faith. Just like the woman with the issue of blood connected to the anointing that was on Jesus, the healing anointing that was on Jesus by faith, by faith. Now, what the, what the, what happened? Is, is that the faith pulls on the anointing on that person. And so say, I believe, I believe this, this healing stories that Pastor Maria is, is saying, say, I believe it's important to ignite your faith. And there's another healing that happened that was a, uh, a, a long time ago. This was when my granddaughter, Elise, was a little baby. Mm -hmm. She was a baby like about two months old or a month old. She was just an infant. And, uh, and the problem with her was demonic oppression. Mm -hmm. Can children be demonically oppressed? Definitely so. What, what happened with that man that had his son that had an unclean spirit, that Jesus uh, rebuked that unclean spirit? He was demonically oppressed. And the Bible says that Jesus asked the father, since when has this happened? And the father says, since childhood, since he was a child. So children can be oppressed. So you need to pray for your children if there's an oppression on them. Because when, uh, when my daughter Eva brought her, to the house, she, we used to live next door to each other. And when she brought her over to my apartment, Elise was screaming and crying uncontrollably and her face was all red and tears were streaming down her face. And she just couldn't, just, Eva said, I've tried everything, mom. I've done everything to, to, to relieve, uh, relieve her. And I, I hasn't been able, I haven't been able to do anything to help her. And so anyway, so she came and she put her in my arms and I just laid and I just laid her close and I started rocking her like that. And within a few seconds, it didn't take long, she just stopped crying. She just stopped crying. And she fell asleep. So <clears throat> that was another healing. But it was a uh, deliverance, actually, uh, by the anointing. And there is one more. If we have time to... Uh, to talk about this one. This is about a pastor that pastors a church here in town. It's a Hispanic pastor. And uh, he, uh, he had been praying for his healing for some time. He had a pain on his side, a very, very terrible pain that he was doubled over, mm -hmm. that he couldn't even walk or function, but he had a, a terrible pain. And he told me later that he had been bleeding internally. And that uh, so, it happened that one of the other pastors from another church was going to go to Texas. And he told my husband and I, he said, Do, is it okay if you guys come and minister at the church and take care of our congregation while we're gone? And we said, well, yes, of course, we can do that. And so I was just prompting, prompted by the Spirit of God to invite this other pastor that had the ailment to invite him to the church. And so we invited him and he came, him and his wife came. And uh, we were, my husband finished preaching, and then he gave me the lead to start ministering. And I started ministering the healing, uh, the healing anointing. And I started ministering healing. And I said, uh, Pastor, and I spoke, I called the pastor, the Spanish pastor. I said, Pastor, will you come over here? I said, the Spirit of God wants to minister to you. And he was very humble. Sometimes pastors aren't. <laughs> but he was very humble. He said, sure, of course. And he came up. And the Spirit of God just let me minister mm -hmm. the healing. And it was like, um, it was an, a very unusual way. There's different mm -hmm. administrations. Mm -hmm. And I just started just patting him on the sides and, you know, releasing mm -hmm. and saying, I, and speaking to that sickness to leave, a command it to go. Mm -hmm. And he went back and sat down. 
But later he called us and he told us, I want to give you a good report. He said, when you were there ministering to me, he said, the spirit of God ministered healing to me. He said, and I had been sick for quite a few months and believing God, he said, and praying to God to be healed. He said, so the spirit of God ministered that healing to me. And so uh, that is another, another healing that uh, was... Uh, it was through prayer and the uh, rebuking of the satanic spirits. Amen. Okay, Amen. so we're going to wrap this up, Andrea. Amen. Did you enjoy it? I did, I did. So we learned about different ways that the anointing can come on and different way, ways that um, you can, you know, be in led of the spirit, the prompting of the Holy Spirit to go like, you know, somebody call, you know, you get a, you go, go over here, you get a prompting. You know, be obedient. You never know what can happen. Yes. Look at all these yes. awesome testimonies. Yes, yes. And like I said, we are we are telling of this testimony so that faith will arise in your Amen. heart concerning the healing ministry that God has graced me with, that healing anointing. Amen. And uh, it's important that I believe for it because I'm going to be ministering healing to you. I mean... The Spirit of God will start flowing, and He'll say, "Whoop! Somebody over there has got a bad back. Oh, a bad back! I just released the healing anointing mm -hmm. on that bad back, yes. and then you bend down and you do the things you couldn't do before. Mm -hmm. So, see, the Spirit of God will come upon us, and then you will receive your healing. Uh, like I said, we're going to continue. There's other healings that uh, that the Lord has used me." other situations where he has uh, flowed the healing anointing mm -hmm, through me. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about those a little bit later at another time. Mm -hmm. So the healing anointing. I wanted, before, I, before we leave, I wanted to uh, give you the opportunity to send for this little book. It's called Living by Principles. And I wrote this little book, and it's only like about 48 or 40 pages long. And what this book is about, I'm going to read it to you. This book is about living according to the principles of the Word of God, and not according to your natural inclinations dictated by your flesh. This book will inspire you to live an orderly life of discipline and commitment to the plan of God. It will put a sense of urgency in your heart to be about the Father's business. So you can uh, send your donation. It's in a donational basis, honey. Now, anybody can for the donation. A donational basis. Send it to GNS TV, Good News Station, 1441 East Michigan Avenue. I think they'll put it there on the screen so that you can uh, can get it. The other book is called The Commandment of Love. And this one here, I'll tell you what it's about. This book is about walking in the love of God. It's an inspiration to all those who want to walk in the principles of the word of God concerning love. Love is the royal law of the kingdom of God. This book will inspire you to exercise patience and consistency in putting these principles of the word of God to work in your heart. Spiritual growth is progressive. It takes time and consistency. But as you practice, the principles in this book, the buds of love will begin to grow. And we all need to walk in love, Andrea. If we want our faith to work, we need to work yes, in love. Yes. If we want our prayers to be answered, we need to walk yes. in love. Faith worketh by love, the Bible says. So nothing will work. It, no, your prayers won't work. Your confessions of faith won't work. You won't be able to receive from God unless you walk in that love of God. So this is a very important a little book. And this book right here is only 44 pages long. You can put it in your little purse or in your pocketbook. And then you can just start reading it. What I do is I read them at night, at nighttime. I just, I put a little marker there where I left off. And then next day, I'll just start reading it again next night. So, Amen. yeah, so this are the two little books that we've got to offer right now. Send your donation to Good News Station, GNS TV, 1441 East Michigan Avenue, Lansing, Michigan, 48912. So, we want you to order them, to get them, so that you can be lifted up in your faith, so that you can be inspired in your faith so Amen. anything else you got to add no on? i just uh, want to encourage you if, if this has blessed you you know give us a call 517-643-1801 you know or if you got a testimony you want to share uh 
regarding our, the um, ministry that she's been teaching on is faith. You know, you're applying it to your life. We want to hear about all the miracles yeah. that God is doing in your life based off of the word of God and his principles. Oh. Amen. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. Well, this has been a wonderful time for us. We hope that it was a good time for you also. And uh, remember one thing until we meet again. We love you. Jesus loves you. And we call Jesus the Lord of Lansing. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You are watching GNS TV Lansing, God's filling station.